Hi, welcome to your tour of the 2021 Whitehawk 32RL by Jayco. We're going to start your virtual orientation on the outside of the trailer and we're going to begin at the front. Your front storage compartment is a pass-through front storage compartment and it has a few neat features from the switching for the front light, tire pressure gauge, manual crank for your electric tongue jack, manual crank for your stabilization jacks, and table that you can use either inside or outside of the trailer. Also, a special note, you'll see that this side marker light is perhaps a little bit different than you're used to seeing, and that's because of this piece here, which houses the pre-wiring for a rear view camera on the side of your RV. There is one here and on the same location on the other side. These are not included but can be purchased separately. Continuing on to the front of the trailer, make note of your battery storage compartment as well as your double 30 pound propane system with crossover regulator. Now what the crossover regulator means or does, uh, right now the handle is pointed in this direction to this tank. What that means is the system will draw propane from this tank first. Once this tank be drops below a predetermined pressure, uh, and that pressure amount is predetermined by the regulator itself and it isn't adjustable, but once it drops below a predetermined pressure, it will automatically cross over and draw from this tank, irregardless of where this handle is pointing. What that means is, if you're camping on a cold night and you've got the furnace on, if you run out of propane, you don't have to go outside in the cold, switch bottles, it'll do it for you automatically. So right in front of the propane system is where we'll see the electric tongue jack. Now the electric tongue jack makes it really nice to utilize the movement of the tongue. Also, there is some handy lighting, great for any hitch-ups in the early morning or late at night. Also on this electric jack, we have a port that can be removed and then you can use the manual crank found in the front storage compartment to lower and raise the front tongue in the event that you run out of power. Also here on the tongue, or sorry, near the tongue, is your breakaway safety switch. This is utilized by attaching the loop end to the tow vehicle. In the event that the tow vehicle is separated from the trailer, this pin is pulled and your RV brakes will be engaged. Conversely, if you ever find that the brakes are engaged when you go to pull, you can come here and check to make sure this pin is fully inserted as that could be the reason that your brakes are engaged. Right beside that, we have your solar ready solar panel hookup. This unit is pre-wired to utilize solar to charge the batteries. We'll stand up, come around, and just make a brief mention of the other camera body that we mentioned on the other side for your rear view camera. And at this point we'll drop down and talk a little bit more about your stabilization jacks. They're located on the four corners of the trailer. These should never be used to level your trailer 
They should only be snug tight after the trailer is fully leveled. On this side of your front compartment, we will make note of your battery disconnect. This battery disconnect will still leave your lights on inside the trailer. However, it will disconnect anything else from having power to it. That way, if you're apart for a bit, uh, if you've left some of the thing, some things on, this will prevent it from draining power and draining your battery. Also here, we'll find the storage for your 30 amp power cable. This is what you'd use to connect to your campground or house power. Also inside the unit, you will find a block that will convert this to a regular 15 amp plug end. So if you're at home and most of us don't have that 30 amp plug on the outside of the house, you can still plug in and get some power to run your refrigerator. Right next to this is where we'll find the potable water fill point. If you want fresh drinking water, you're going to be camping off grid. Uh, you're not going to have a garden hose basically to attach to your uh, water system. Then you'd want to fill your freshwater tank and utilize the onboard water pump uh, to pressurize your system and uh, give you water. Right below this, we have your inlet for your tank flush. Use this, hook your garden hose up to it and flush out your black tank. Continuing along, the next item of, of interest we'll come to is the output for your black and gray water tanks. And we will notice specifically your black and two gray water tank valve handles. Sometimes these can be difficult, difficult to locate. You may have to crawl under the trailer a little bit. In this case, they are right here, readily available and visible. Continuing along the outside, we'll come to your city water connection. This is where you put your garden hose from your house or the campground to connect your uh, water system to water. We also have the outside access to your hot water tank. A couple items of interest here that we'd like to talk about first would be the anode rod for your drain plug. With this inserted and the drain secure, uh, the tank full of water, the system pressurized, always open the pressure relief valve, leave it open, relieve pressure from the system before you attempt to remove the drain plug to drain the hot water heater. If you don't, that's going to shoot out of there pretty darn hard. And the last thing we'd like to speak of back here is the reset. So if you're trying to light the hot water tank, it's just not going. Come out here, press the reset, and try to light again. We have the 30 amp uh, power connection point. This is where you'd hook up the uh, power from your campground or from uh, from your home. As we continue along, we'll come to the venting for your refrigerator. Now, in order for your refrigerator to operate properly, it is important that this venting remains clear of any obstructions as there needs to be airflow up through the venting for proper functioning. Continue on. We'll look up and make a note here and here on the moldings of the slide out, you actually have pre-installed connection points for a slide topper. That does not come with this unit, but can be purchased separately. Next, at the back corner here, you also have 
an outdoor shower, and the main input for your satellite and cable TV. As we roll along the back, we'll point out the roof access via ladder, as well as a pre-wired camera housing for a rear view camera. This can be purchased separately. If we squat down here, we'll show you a quick connect propane port. This is useful for any outdoor barbecue. You can utilize the onboard propane system so you don't have to lug around an extra bottle. In order to utilize it, you have to open the valve, which is this way in line with the inlet. And then you can use your onboard propane to run your barbecue. Okay, we've almost come full circle here. This unit has two awnings, which can be controlled inside the unit. You'll make special note of the awning here and the second awning here. On this slide out is where you'll find your outside speakers here and here, as well as your output for a cable TV and 120 volt power. These speakers can be utilized or used with the stereo inside the unit. Last thing I'll show you outside is the accent lighting for your stairs. It's a nice way to illuminate your path back to your trailer. Let's take a step inside and we'll see what we have in here to talk about. Okay. First things first, right through the door. As soon as you walk in, straight ahead, we kind of have your little command center here. Uh, we have uh, some of the more old school or manual like switching for your living room lights, your security light outside, your awning lights, as well as uh, extending your awning. Now this will only extend the, the one awning or retract it. Um, however, below we have the J command system. Um, I won't go into every detail <clears throat> about the system, but I'll try to give you a brief overview that'll help you get started uh, uh, using it. So with this system, we have these little light bulbs down here. They will switch on and off your lights of your trailer. Uh, like such. Uh, we also have this one that is set up specifically to run your water pump, as well as this one that is specifically set up to uh, run your uh, anything to do with temperature, so AC thermostat kind of thing. So in, either, or in order to get around in the system to change screens, right now we're kind of on your motor screen where you have your awnings, uh, slides, etc. To cycle through the different screens, we'll hit the top button here. So that takes you from awnings to your, your uh, temperature or thermostat settings. Then we go through kind of a settings page where uh, you can pair a device. I'll get to that in a minute. And then we have your tank levels, your water pump, heater on gas and electric and so on. Now, once you uh, get to the screen that you want to, to look at, um, you use the select button to go through the different options on the individual screens. So this button changes screens, this button changes what you can select on the screen. And then you use these buttons to turn things on and off or just to select uh, the individual option once you've uh, highlighted it. Uh, now, if you press the select button until you come to 
the settings page or the settings screen. From here, we can actually pair this device with a cell phone. So in order to do that, you need to download the J command app from either the app store or the Google play store, depending on what type of phone you have. Uh, and once you do that, I'm going to try to show you here on my phone, you'll have this icon here for J command. I'll open it up. Here's the J command home screen. Now I believe I've already got this paired. So yes, it tells me it's paired. So I will uh, press that. I un I'll unpair it so I can go through the pairing. So when you open the app and you don't have it paired, it'll actually come to the screen and it wants you to pick which J command system you have. Well, we have this one. So I will press that. It'll now tell you to press this screen screen screen. You can call it a screen if you want, but uh, it's actually a screen. You can uh, press this screen select button on the unit here until you get to the settings page, which I've already done ahead of time, and it's already highlighted on pair device. So once you've done that, you go next. It'll then tell you to press OK, press OK. So I pressed OK to connect. And that is all you have to do. It'll sit there and wait and think and spin. As you can see, I press the button, you see the little spinny circle. That means it's trying to do something. And eventually it'll come up and say, oh, look, here you can uh, now control your RV. So it uh, tells you the temperature inside. It, uh, it gives you settings to control the climate, the AC, the fan. Uh, you can also connect, uh, you can see what your battery power is at, um, but you can do the, your awning, your awnings, your uh, slides, uh, any, any motors at all. If you had landing gear on a trailer, uh, meaning the stabilization jacks are automated, then you could also do that. This particular RV doesn't have that, but there's lots you can do with it anyhow. So hopefully that's enough to get you started looking around in the app and figuring out everything that you can do with it. All right, I think we spent enough time talking about that. Let's drop down here. Now, because this uh, unit is only has a 30 amp uh, supply for the power, um, you're unable to run the hot water heater and the fireplace at the same time. So one of the important things that uh, we need to mention is this actually switches between using the fireplace and the hot hot water tank on electric, sorry. Your hot water tank on electric and your fireplace. So make sure it is in one of either up or down to uh, to select the fire the uh, fireplace or the hot water tank, depending on what you wish. We have uh, mechanical switching for your dining room lights here. And right below this, we have the main load center or power center for the RV. The load center or power center uh, is where you'll find the breakers like you might find in your, your home. And they function much the same. And the and the fuses, sorry, like you uh, would see in your vehicle. And there's also a little LED light that will light up if one of these fuses is not uh, functioning as it should. Okay, right next door to here, we have uh, your carbon monoxide propane uh, detection alarm. It's important that uh, we test this every so often. To do so, you press the button on the front, it'll issue a series of loud beeps, and then the green light will shut off. Uh, then once it's all done, the green light will come back on and stay on. And that indicates that your system is good to go. I'm going to stand up here and make my way to the wards, the, the bedroom. Before we go into the bedroom and take a look in there, 
I just want to make note when we were outside, we talked about this unit being pre wired for solar. And as you see here, they have a sticker marking uh, where you'd put the inside head unit for the, uh, for the solar for this. So if you do decide at some point to go ahead and purchase any, any of this separately, uh, it is already pre-marked and uh, should be easy to, to hook it up for you. Okay, let's step inside. And once in here, we'll notice a couple things. You have your underbed storage, as you would on a lot of RVs. But specifically on this under under uh, under bed storage, you'll see that there is a pretty uh, easily accessible access to your to your uh, water pump. So as you can see there, there is the valve for your water pump. That's the valve that you'll turn to uh, switch the pump between uh, winterization mode and uh, basically uh, off grid camping mode. So. Right now, it's it's uh, pointing towards that fill tube right here, and what that means is it will draw from that tube, uh, and that tube would normally be connected to a jug of antifreeze. Okay, bear with me here. Sorry about the loud thump. So this, unit I really like what they've done in that they have nice accent lighting that you can see the little blue lighting at the side of the bed nice little night light but we also have USB charging capabilities right beside the bed on either side of the bed The bedroom houses a emergency exit. Easy to use, press down on the black tab, push the red handle over and up, because then perpendicular to the window, you can push the handle all the way out of the window. After you've done so, pull on the red tab, remove the screen, and you can now escape to safety. Now in addition to your phone, and the control panel that I showed you uh, just previously, you can also control the slide in and out in the bedroom with uh, this switch here. Let's walk around into the bathroom. Make note of the unit GFCI plug. Uh, if at any time you're finding that you're without power at some of your plugs, uh, especially the, any counter plugs, plugs near water or your outside plugs, um, come in here and check. If you see that red light on, that would indicate that this has been tripped and you need to reset it, make the red light go away in order for power to flow to the load side of the plug. And what that means is anything that's connected to it and also GFCI'd um, or anything that will trip this uh, will also be turned off when it's tripped. Okay, let's take our tour to the main portion of the trailer. Now I do want to make one note. Uh, you will see that the slide is partially in on the trailer. That is for no other reason other than uh, limited space inside our shop. It's not very nice out, so we're doing the video inside and uh, it just doesn't leave a lot of room to get around the trailer with the slide fully out. That shouldn't affect uh, what we're doing here today though. Now, we'll come to your dining room table. You'll see that there's some storage inside, placemats or anything like that, or whatever you want really. It is yours after all. But we'll also note that we have some additional table space, if you have any guess. Pretty handy right now. It looks like there's not much room, but again, just want to point out that the slide is in that much too far, so there would be actually quite a bit of room at the end of the table with the leaf fully extended. Put that back. 
take a look at your seating here. And what we'll notice about the seating is these tables. They come with the cup holder and insert into the cup holder of the chair. Uh, what this means is you can take these off if you don't want to use them, you can store them. A lot of times people will put them underneath the uh, storage space under the bed. And you still have a cup holder you can use, uh, as well as some in the center between the two chairs. But you can use it as well, like a TV tray, it's pretty handy. And just want to point out there's this nice storage space in between as well. Nice handy spot for the remote if you don't want to lose it or always have it close at hand. These two units are both reclining and the way to do that is sometimes hidden but if you go to the right side of the chair when you're sitting in it you'll see that there's this little tab. Simply pull that and that will extend the footrest. Before we uh, go any further, right above my head here, I have the smoke detector. Smoke detector has a bottom uh, button on the bottom. It does have a bottom, but more importantly, what I want to show you is that there is a button there. That button will can be depressed, and that will test your smoke alarm to make sure it's functioning properly. However, I usually find that it's easiest to replace the battery on the smoke detector every six months uh, during daylight savings time. It's just an easier way to remember. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, I'd also press the button on the front of your propane carbon monoxide alarm just to make sure it's functioning properly as well. That way you're always safe and protected. So I'm going to turn right around here. If we look down, we'll see your fireplace. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to use your fireplace, you have to make sure that that switch is in the proper position. Uh, and it will mean that you're unable to use the hot water tank on electric for that period of time. And you'll see that there are more USB charging ports here and over here at the uh, sides of your couch. You're well, uh, well connected and protected as far as uh, charging any phones goes. Also, on your countertop, you'll see this uh, funny circle here. If you press that and then pull it up, it actually gives you some more USB charging as well as 120 uh, volt charging capabilities. Now, I don't know if you've been paying attention or not, but one thing you may have noticed is that I haven't seen a TV anywhere yet. Well, that's kind of strange. You'd think that there would be a TV in here somewhere. Well, there is. If you look at your fireplace, look up to the right of it in this corner, you'll see this handle pull and the TV magically appears. Pretty neat and an excellent position for it right across from your recliners. All right, let's come around here and look at your stove and range top. To light the range top, you turn to the light position, turn your sparker knob. If you see there, I turned it more than once, it didn't light. Sometimes that will happen when you first turn on the bottles. If there's not enough pressure in the system, it may take a little bit for the gas to build enough pressure to uh, successfully light. So these three range top burners are all lit in the same fashion. Turn to the light position, the little flame on the knob, turn it to match up with the arrow, and turn the sparker knob. The oven is lit much of the same way with one small difference. When the flame is lined up with the arrow, instead of turning the sparker knob right away, you have to first press the button in and hold, 
as you turn the sparker knob. Small difference, but a big difference all the same. Next we'll take a look at your refrigerator. Your refrigerator has a capacitive touch on button and it can switch between an auto mode, a straight electric mode, and a gas mode. Now the gas mode obviously uses uh, the onboard propane system that you'd find uh, at the, the front of the trailer. Uh, if you attempt to light on gas when in gas mode uh, and it does not work, you'll see light flashing on the front of the fridge here. Uh, oftentimes uh, the cause of that can be either uh, the valves haven't been opened yet or you just open the valves uh, on your bottles and you've come in right away because you want to make sure that your fridge is on and starts getting cold so that's the first thing you try to do uh, and oftentimes the pressure just isn't built up so if it doesn't light turn it on tries to light three times then a light flashes turn it off give it a minute come back to it and uh, try to light it again now this unit also has an auto mode which will automatically switch between gas for electric and it also has a straight up electric mode. Now when in auto mode, it'll switch, it'll choose uh, to operate on electricity first if it is present. The last thing I want to talk about is the inside access to your water heater. It can be gained through here. You remove the, this with two red Robertson screws. And once behind there, you'd see that there are two valves similar to the one that was on the water pump, that uh, if they're turned in line and pointing towards your water heater, then that means your water will flow in and out of the water heater. However, if they're pointed parallel to the back of the water heater or not pointing towards it, then it is set up in winter mode. Uh, it's set up to bypass the water heater so you're not filling up uh, your water tank with uh, antifreeze. Uh, when you're when you're using the fill tube on your uh, your water pump well that about does it for our virtual tour feel free to give us a call and we'd be happy to take some time and go over anything or any questions that you might have